Hey folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today I am sharing how to make spider mums on one of my favorite tools, the quilling comb. This is the comb that I use most often. It is the onion holder type of comb. It's really easy to hold and has nice wide teeth. If you have a different quilling uh, comb, you may need to adjust this tutorial. Uh, we're going to be using some green. I have my green of choice here, which is the leaf green from Craft Harbor. And I also have what I'm going to use for my flowers, which is deep red, also from Craft Harbor paper. Most of the project is going to be made with some Elmer's white glue in my needle nose bottle, but I also do need some tacky glue later on. I'm going to be using a needle tool that may be handy for you as well. Also a small paintbrush some tweezers. I'm going to be building my flower mostly in my hand but you might need a surface to work on that you won't mind getting gluey and then always a little damp cloth to wipe your gluey fingers off if need be. So the first thing we're going to do is make the base for our flower and we're going to be doing that with that leaf green. These strips are about 24 inches long and I'm using two of them tearing off the ends because I'm going to be gluing these end to end. I just tear off all the ends and I don't need to worry about which ones I did end up tearing because remember torn edges make smoother seams in quilling. So there you go, I'm gluing two of them, gluing two of these strips end to end and I'm going to roll it all up on my needle tool. If you choose to do this part on a slotted quilling tool or on an automatic, that is totally fine. I probably should have grabbed an automatic tool for this part because it does take a minute to roll up such a long strip. We are going to be using a needle tool later on the flowers, but if you don't have one of those handy, your slotted tool will work. We just need something that has sort of a a surface you'll see when we get to that part. I'm not sure how to describe it without showing you what we're doing and I don't want to jump ahead too far. But as we're rolling this all the way to the end, I just want to note that we are using this green part here to place our flower petals in once we form them on the, the quilling comb. So that will come back in in a little bit. But for now, we're just going to get to the end of this strip. We're going to glue down the end and make sure that is secure before we move on to the next part. After we have our glue and we have our seal nice and secure for this tight coil, we are going to push out the center just a bit to make a dome. If you prefer using a mold for this part, you're welcome to, but it doesn't have to be anything really specific. It's probably a good idea to have a more flat bottom. So just work your fingers around and then push the bottom in a little bit. You just need a very gentle curve on that one. It doesn't have to be anything drastic. You're going to put a little bit of glue all around that inside and then brush it smooth. Remember the glue here is going to keep your shape. So you brush it so it gets on every single layer of your dome. And then we're going to set that aside to dry while we work on our flower petals. Like I said before, this is the quilling comb that I use. So you might have a different one where your teeth are closer together or further apart. The basic technique will work. Just don't worry too much about the numbers. What I do is I start in the back and I pull up between the five and the six tooth. And then I bend it back towards the front again. I'm not making full loops here. I'm just ending up kind of doing a zigzag back and forth. So a little bend. You can see there at the beginning again. So it's just wrapped around the fifth tooth and then bent back again at the beginning. Up, skipping one tooth, and then going around the next one. Skip that one, around the next one. And we're trying to keep everything more or less in line, but don't worry if it gets a little bit crooked because we can fix that later. We take our strip and go back to the front again, another bend. Same thing, we're gonna skip a tooth, go around the next one, and pull your tail back up to the front where we started, 
and then you can tear off any extra. At this point, you can see that I have a big loop and then a smaller one and a smaller one. Go ahead and pull that off your, your tool and this is what it should look like. It's okay if it opens up. That's what we want because we haven't glued anything down yet. It's not going to stay together. We have three big loops like that with a zigzag on the other side. At this point you can add a dot of glue between each of the layers and then squeeze all that together just on the end. You want these three big loops to be open and then the end to stay glued together. And that only takes a second to set. Remember to wipe off your fingers if you feel them getting a little sticky. And then this is where I'm going to grab my needle tool again, but you can use the handle of a tool or anything that you can fit between these layers. Running it between my thumb and the tool almost to the end of each one of those loops. I want to have a very small loop still on the, bot, on the end there. Every one, all three, just run them like you're curling a ribbon on a present, but not all the way to the very end. I find that leaving that little loop kind of adds to the look of the flower when it's done. And that is one petal of your spider mum. For each of them, you're going to need somewhere between 15 and 18. And they go pretty quickly. At this point, your, your base should definitely be dry and you have your little uh, petals all ready to go. You're going to grab some tacky glue. If you don't have tacky glue, you can use the Elmer's. It's just easier because we're kind of doing a, a semi 3D creation here. So it's always nice to have the quicker staying power of the tacky glue. And it's always nice if you have a pair of tweezers. It's easier to get these little tiny petals in, a little bit more control over them. I'm just doing a dip method. I'm going to dip on the back side bottom of a petal and kind of just place it along the edge so it's coming out of that little base. It's gonna sort of stick up in the air for a while and that is okay. We're gonna, we're gonna make these flowers open up a little bit later at the end of the video. For right now, you want them to sort of stick up. And what I found easiest, instead of just going around in a circle, is doing them in thirds. So I start off with three and I put them, like I said, kind of split that base into thirds. Don't worry about it being exact. It's just an estimation. But for all three, I am taking my tweezers, going a little bit backwards in the tacky glue to get that glue just on the, the reverse side and on the bottom and place them in there. And sometimes you need your tweezers to press them down a little bit. Just try to get them to stand up as straight as you can. Let that dry for a little bit and then we're gonna move on to add some more. Because this is tacky glue, we don't need to wait for it to totally dry. We just want it so that we can keep working. And at this point, I'm going to go between each of those that I just added. And I know it seems silly to do it this way. Maybe you're saying, why don't you just go around in a circle and just put them all on? Because as we get it more and more full, they're going to have to start laying on top of each other on the bottom. There's not going to be enough room for each one to individually if you want a really full flower that is, they're not gonna be able to individually sit nice and neat on the bottom. So they're gonna start stacking on top of each other. And if you did it just in a circle, it would almost be like a spiral. You know, all the ones you put on first would be on the outside. And then eventually as it got more and more crowded, they would be higher. It would, it would, it would look like a little swirl on top of your flower. It would look kind of odd. So I would do, ooh, just do it in sections and try to make it even that way. And then once you get to the to the last few flower petals that you have to kind of put on the top of the rest of them they won't look like they're they're a different size okay squeeze all that in and let that sit so you can go to the next part now at this point your petals might be dry enough in your base that you can spread them out a little bit that'll make it look more like a spider mom 
but it will also help you find where you need to start filling in your gaps. And you can see that mine definitely isn't even. I have a big, huge gap on that side. So I'm going to start filling in on that side. I still have a lot more petals to go, so I obviously are going to I'm going to fill in all those closer bits as well, but that's where I wanted to start off with is that big open side there. And you're just going to keep going around and around and filling in where you think you need more petals. Don't worry too much about the fact that the center doesn't have any, any petals in it as of yet because we are going to get to that part after we fill around the outside. So just keep turning and filling in wherever you think you need petals, pressing them down in the center with your finger or your tweezers, however you would like to get them to stay. Don't worry that they're going to start overlapping on the bottom. That is to be expected and that is okay. We're gonna fill that part in after we get all the outside parts done. pretty happy with the amount of petals that I have maybe I could have fit in one or two more but it looks pretty full around the outside and I just need to work on filling in the center and this part couldn't really be any easier we're going to take another strip of the that deep red paper again tear off more or less of an inch make a little loop with our fingers and just glue that together to seal. Really nothing fancy here. No tool needed. That's, that's pretty much it. Just a loop. And after you press that to stay, we're going to make around five of those I found to be pretty good for filling in the size. If your flowers are bigger or smaller, you might decide you need more or less. That is all totally up to you but five or so of those loops will be just perfect. And then for one more added touch, I'm making kind of a double loop with one strip. You can always do this with two strips and just make two loops. Just save some time to make one of these. Glue the two pieces where the ends are gonna meet. Pinch that, almost looks like a little heart when you're done. So I make one of those and five of the other loops and that's what I'm gonna use to fill in the center of my spider mom. When it comes to attaching these little loops to the center of the flower, we're gonna do it pretty much the same way. Another little puddle of tacky glue and starting with the individual loops, just go backwards in the bottom. You can also put some right at the bottom and have these sort of stand up to the extent that they stand up. It's okay if they kind of fall over a little bit. Uh, because it's tacky glue, it will set fairly quickly. So if you want to just kind of hold it for a moment like I did there, you can usually get them to stand. Or if you just glue on the bottom and then after it dries, you can you know bend these around as you need to. But what I have been doing is putting the five individual loops sort of in a circle shape right inside the flower. It's nothing super perfect or precious. It's just sort of putting them in there in a circle-like manner. Ooh, I'm losing it. And after I get the okay if they fall over it really is after I get the last one then we're going to place the the double loop in the center of that and that is a very quick and easy way to fill up the middle and not only are we filling up the space but we're also concealing any any glue that you might see and it just makes the flower just come together and look like they are many, many layers of petals 
like there are many layers of petals in a spider mom. There you go. As far as variations go, we get some dry ones here. You can alter the shape of your flower. You can kind of mold the petals back towards the center again to make it look more like a flower bud. You can spread them out even more, make it really flat and open. Like you see a lot of the more mature uh, spider mums in the fall. And you can keep going for your needs. You can make them obviously different colors. If you look up mums, uh, specifically fall colored mums, there are quite a few tones, different oranges and yellows and whites. And you can also, I made some two-tone mums here and I did that by making the first loop on my quilling comb in a pale yellow and then the last two larger loops in white. I just glued, I tore off the, the yellow after the first loop, glued on some white and kept going and then did it exactly the same way and added just some white in the center. You can do like a reddish orange one the same way. You can definitely do more than one color on these. You can leave them just like this on like a, a card or whatever you would like, or you can put a stem uh, right on the end of this. I've done some videos where I show you how to make these into actual like standing flowers you can put in a vase or some sort of container. And I will link to that down below if you want to see how that can be done. I will link to other quilling comb projects, other flowers, if you're interested in those playlists also, as well as any supplies I used. So look for all that in the description box for this video. Don't forget to leave any questions in the comments and I'll answer those as soon as I can. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be around for my next video. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.